when we draw a sequence diagram, what we're trying to get at is the messages that pass between objects or instances of components in our system and the order in which that happens and what causes what. In the simplest and commonest case, we are talking about objects sending messages to one another, that is, invoking one another's operations. Let's suppose we're in an ordinary single-threaded synchronous system. Now we've got our object, let's say C, of type copy, class copy. In UML this isn't technically an object, but you can think of it as an object. It does absolutely no harm. Okay. And let's suppose we know another object involved in this interaction is going to have class book, and we'll call it B, terribly original. Now we're interested in how messages pass over time, and that's reflected by the vertical distance on a diagram like this. Each object has a timeline, and time flows down the page. So any messages that come in or out of this line here are messages that are coming to or from the object C of class copy. We're representing here an example of an interaction that can happen. Suppose that we're representing an example of what happens when something from outside tells a copy that it is being borrowed. In other words, something invokes the borrow operation on an object of the copy class. What's it going to do? Eventually, it's going to reply to that message. But in between, it's going to do some stuff. We'll worry about what it's getting this message from and where it's replying to in a bit. Leave that for a moment. Let's suppose that the copy has to inform its book, the book of which it is a copy, so that the book will know that it has one fewer copy available and this particular copy is not on the shelf anymore. Well, it does that by sending a message to the book object. These filled-in arrowheads here, they represent the fact that this is synchronous message passing. In other words, the copy is not going to do anything now until it gets a reply to this message that it's just sending to book. And unoriginally, we're also going to call this borrow. I think it might be slightly different in using UML. And it's going to send itself, C, as an argument, because it's going to say, hey, book, I've been borrowed. Okay. Now, a book's going to do something, and then it's going to send back the reply to copy. It says, OK, done that. Sometimes that's all you'll see. It can often help to put in what are called activation bars, like this. And the activation bar goes from where the object is caused to do something, by it receiving a message, like copy receiving this borrow message. And the activation bar goes all the way down until that message has been completely dealt with and the object is in a position to send a reply to the object that sent it the message in the first place. Similarly over here, the book will have an activation bar that looks a bit like this. Now if we're feeling really sophisticated, we can even make a difference between this time, which is when copy is actually computing. Who knows what it's computing? We don't represent that in this diagram, but it could be computing. And this time in here when it's quiescent, because we're talking about synchronous messages, it does nothing in this time, because it's waiting for a reply from the book object. Down here again, it could be doing some computation. In the meantime, the book object can be doing all its computation, just like that. And there we are, that's a simple sequence diagram for one possible scenario of an interaction between a copy and a book. A couple more things to say. I mentioned the filled in arrowhead like that. Notice that the return arrows are dashed and they have this kind of open arrowhead. The last thing to say is, well, what is it that's actually invoking these messages? There are several different ways we can represent that. We could just say, well, it's a found message. We just put a blob on the end there that basically just says we don't know. Alternatively, alternatively we could just say, well, suppose there's some actor that's doing it. 
and then the actor itself gets a lifeline and the message comes from the actor. Let's get rid of that blob, that doesn't apply in this case. If we have an actor in a sequence diagram, the actor has an activation bar that goes on forever. And basically that's just to indicate that actors or other things outside your system might do stuff at any moment because you don't control them. Um, activation bars basically show when an object might be going to do something because it's been asked to do something that hasn't completed it yet. For actors, that's all the time.